countries. And, of course, all the third world countries voted for the stupid thing because <laughs> they're on, I mean, they get they the money. It out. They're, they're, they're on the right side of the income transfer. That's right. They're on the receiving it. But all it's nothing more than income transfer. And so the Heritage Foundation, very scholarly uh, uh, group, uh, did a uh, study of how much this would cost uh, per year if, if the House bill that, that Wall voted for were enacted. And the Heritage Foundation calculated this would cost the average family of four $6,800 per year in added energy costs uh, because of this uh, horrific cap and trade. And that, of course, is money the family can't spend on housing, can't spend on a car, and can't spend to help its kids go through college. And so there are all kinds of ripple effects, and that is the kids end up having to borrow money for college and we now have over a trillion dollars in uh, debt that college students uh, have incurred uh, because they couldn't have the money <laughs> to buy for college. And so it's a very, very vicious circle. And the return in terms of the environment is zero. And so this is all money down a rat hole. Right. And so this is the kind of thing that, that um, Walls grooves on. In fact, his website for years has just uh, salivated over cap and trade. <laughs> So, I mean, this is this is the wacko left that uh, is in charge here. So, I get this. You get this. Do the voters get this? I mean, this well, is, the, I mean, he should have won last time. They will when we're done with it. Um, all the voters need to know is that number one, this has no positive effect on the environment. Number two, if enacted, this would cost the average family of four six thousand eight hundred dollars every year in added energy costs, there would be no return. People understand uh, that they understand a waste of money. Mm -hmm. and that's, uh, I mean, that at best is what this is all about. All right, Alan, what, uh, let's get uh, to the endorsement fight. What's ma what makes you the best candidate to challenge Congressman Walls? Um, you know, there are a number of things, and I would say, uh, first of all, that uh, I, am the, uh, I am the candidate who really subscribes uh, really is committed to conservative principles. And I, let me just cite one example out of many. Um, when I speak at the various uh, BPOU conventions, or here we call them county conventions, uh, I always uh, stress the fact that I am committed to balancing the federal budget. Uh, by the way, that's going on my lawn sign, both quiz and balance <laughs> budget. Nice. Okay. Uh, why not put a message on your on your sign? So I, that's going right on the sign. But I'm committed Look, to balancing the budget. A lot of people's a lot of people's uh, policies they want to enact can't fit on a lawn sign. <laughs> I know, I know. See, at one of my events, uh, one of my friends asked me, said, uh, "Al, can you state your campaign in one sentence?" I said, "I'll state it in three words: balance the budget." Perfect. And so, so it's very simple, you know. Um, well, hopefully, Alan, that b by the time you run for re-election, you'll have done that. You'll need to get new lawn signs. <laughs> Well, <laughs> hey, I, 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 you know that wouldn't be the worst problem to nope. have. But being as cheap as I am, I would just, you know, I would just paint over that part. <laughs> just cut it off. Yeah. <laughs> so, in any way, I always in my speeches, I always say, uh, balance the budget in six years or less, because everybody says balance the budget. But right. I mean, what does it mean? And so, my competition will say balance the budget over and over, but he never gives a timetable. Okay. And so you translate that, for instance, to the policy out in uh, out in Washington, and and the uh, the people that are serious members of the Republican Study Committee, and this is about 85 uh, people, uh, presented last week uh, their plan for balancing the budget, which would balance the budget uh, in five years. And I associate myself with these conservatives who are serious about balancing the budget. My competition won't do that, and so he just talks about balancing the budget generally. Tim Walls talks about ba balancing the budget. Okay. And so, so what I'm saying is if you don't put a timetable on it, and it's got to be, I mean, six years is the most you can uh, go out, not 28 years like uh, Congressman Ryan, as much as I like him. Mm -hmm. uh, said. So that's one thing. I mean, you have to be serious about... Uh, about uh, facing the crisis that well, we're and, in. And, Alan, we, we've talked about this on the show. We see it in state government and federal government. They'll put a budget plan out or a, or a forecast plan or some kind of plan that goes so far into the future that can be changed by a future legislature or a future Congress yeah. whenever. So what does it really mean? I like, I like six yeah. years makes more sense to me. Yeah, I mean, balancing the budget by 2040. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 That's, <laughs> what, what is this? I mean, it's... 
it's like forecasting the weather. I mean, you think you can forecast <laughs> uh, economics out 28 years? Give me a break. All right. Now, <laughs> what, what, can our, what would you like from our listeners? Do you need donations? I, of course, you need delegate votes. Uh, uh, where can people go to sign up to help you out? Well, our website is Quist for Congress, Quist, quistforcongress.com, and there's a place there to donate. Uh, there's a place there to access a lot of the information I've put out. And uh, you asked briefly about the, the, the marriage uh, tax, and so let yeah. me go back to that. Sure. Give, the, give the hard give, Let me give the hard copy on that as uh, Public Radio did the uh, polygraph test, the fact check uh, test on and that is very that is very simply this, and I explain it by example. A couple, combined income of sixty thousand uh, dollars, doing pretty well. Private insurance, which is where everybody's going to be under Obamacare, uh, very very quickly. Two thousand fourteen, this couple will pay ten thousand four hundred twenty five dollars more for their medical insurance under Obamacare if they are married. As compared to, let's say, living together unmarried, mm-hmm. and uh, and this is the hidden agenda. There's one of two. There's a huge income transfer system in the plan too. It takes money. I mean, takes the cost off a of big business and puts it on the middle class. But Yay. this marriage tax is the huge hidden agenda in Obamacare. And I will be very frank in saying this marriage tax is designed to destroy marriage for the middle class. Just as welfare has destroyed marriage for the poor, Obamacare will destroy marriage for the middle class. And this is part of the agenda of the left, which wants us dependent on government rather than dependent on one another, on husbands, wives, parents, children, uh, and, uh, and this sort of thing. So I will go after walls for discrimination against married people. And that's exactly what this is. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is incredible wholesale uh, discrimination, and um, I'm, I'm warning people in southern Minnesota, get used to hearing the word discrimination, because that's exactly what Congressman Walls uh, has been party to. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that you are close with her, but has our favorite congresswoman weighed into your uh, race, your endorsement race? Well, she's taking, I mean, she has her own timetable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I let you know I'm very I'm very content with the timetable that she has. All right. Okay. So the endorsing convention is April nineteenth, and right. your website is Quist for Congress. Yep. All right, Alan. Thank you so much. Uh, we we we'll, uh, we look forward to having you on after the endorsement convention if it goes your way. Sure, it uh, will. But we. <laughs> I like the kind of, well. One thing, Alan, that that you have, and and the late debate doesn't doesn't endorse. No. Uh, because nobody cares what we think, but <laughs> I, I've often wondered uh, about people who who lose an endorsement race and then come back the next year after the person who beat them for that endorsement race didn't win the general. Uh-huh. Do you ever just say to people, "I mean, you didn't endorse me last time, and look how well that worked out"? <laughs> maybe I haven't, but maybe maybe I should. No, don't you know, take my I... advice. Don't take my advice. <laughs> But I do point out, for instance, that uh, Newt Gingrich ran three times before uh, he was elected, and Colin Peterson ran four times. Now, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not suggesting anything, but you know there are major advantages to having been a candidate before. I mean, oh, you get absolutely. to know people; they get to know you. You establish some organization, and so on. So, and every race uh, you run, you 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 run a better operation each time you yep. do it. You learn more. You're a better candidate. Absolutely, that's right. That's really true. Okay, Alan, thanks so much. We'll encourage people to go to your website, yeah, quistforcongress.com, and wish you the absolute best of luck and say hi to Julie for me. Well, Jack and Ben, thank you, and I will do that. All right, take care. Thanks, man. Okay.